fiscal period raised the level of budgetary allocations to the sector from the traditional 1% to a significant 6%, with the current indications of reaching and surpassing the 10% threshold set in the Maputo Declaration for Support to Agriculture. Very recently, in the past two months, a total of over $53 million was allocated to the Ministry of Agriculture to secure seeds, and another total of $69 million to procure and distribute fertilizers for recovery of farmers' production in regard to recent emergency situations in food production in the country. Again, a total of $120 million has recently been allocated for the purchase of quality agricultural equipment to buttress our agricultural mechanization efforts. Government continues to successfully mobilize support every time the sector experiences emergency situations of negative weather or pandemic occurrences of animal and crop pests and diseases. The concerns of government and her development partners about the shortcomings in the sector and the serious implications they have on the country's efforts in economic development have led the government to identify measures through which it could determine the real problems that limit the sector from performing efficiently and establish orders that will address these problems appropriately. This conference is just one of those efforts. <laughs> Chairpersons, well, Honorable Minister representing the Vice President, <coughs> distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all of us here know that the largest majority of operators in the ANR sector are the farmers, livestock herders, fish folks, foresters, their institutions such as established groups, organizations and associations. The performance of all of these operators, no doubt, influences greatly the performance of the sector as a whole. It is therefore logical that if the ANR sector is to be made efficient and to continuously meet expectations from it, then attention must first be focused on the operators who influence its performance. A rapid assessment of the nature and extent of involvement of these operators, that is you, the farmers, and your institutions in the sector, revealed some disturbing negative trends. First, many farmers and their institutions hear about government support frameworks for the sector, but very few really know about the details of such support, especially the importance of these support frameworks to their households, communities, livelihoods, the country, and more so the need to ensure that the results are sustained. Secondly, majority of farmers and their institutions do not appear to demonstrate full awareness of the responsibilities they carry in the planning and management of the frameworks or making contributions to the achievement of the undertakings. Thirdly, farmers hardly dialogue directly with the government or development partners. At best, they engage in ad hoc and most times on planned meetings with project or extension agents when an activity or requirements of a project are being explained. Soon after they receive their handouts of seeds or other inputs, they become very distant from government until a visit by the head of state or other such high-level dignitaries to their locations. And then farmers present a shopping list of needs and wants, sometimes embarrassing to the visiting dignitary or the accompanying government technical officials. Well, honorable farmers, I have news for you. Government is determined to arrest and reverse this trend of inadequate planning. <laughs> Participation and commitment in the development, implementation, and monitoring of support frameworks in the sector. And we are going to put in place, in a participatory way, measures through which to achieve a desirable and sustainable change in the efficiency and performance of farmers and their institutions in the, in the ANR sector. I believe there is no better way presently to chart the course of participatory transformation of the sector than to establish a coherent 
effective and inclusive process of dialogue among stakeholders in the sector. Firstly, between and among farmers, then between farmers, their associations and the government, as well as development partners, business, commercial and private entities and individuals. Government is fully aware of the activities by a number of groups and associations to move the dialogue process forward. Government, however, believes that much more needs to be done to ensure universal coverage of farmers and their interest in the activities of such associations, especially in extending information <coughs> outreach to farmers and mobilizing them effectively for self-reliant participation in national frameworks of support to the ANR sector. As you may be aware, during the past few weeks, as part of the preparations for this farmers' conference, you, the farmers, and your institutions have held consultations in your respective regions on issues regarding your commitment and participation, needs and requirements in the policy and program frameworks the government has established for support to the NR sector. This conference marks the convergence point of the results of these consultations, and more importantly, the inauguration of the highest platform of consultations or dialogue of farmers and their associations in this country. The conference, it is expected, will also provide us with an opportunity to reaffirm our individual and collective commitment to a transparent, accountable, and inclusive process of dialogue between and among stakeholders in the ANR sector, and the determination to raise the level of performance of the sector to meet the demands on it for national prosperity. Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Solomon Owens, speaking at the start of All Farmers Conference held recently in the Njambure Central River region. In his speech, the country representative in the country, Dr. Baba Gana Amadou, said his organization through his director general declared Ag Africa agriculture as a priority. He noted that FAO will continue to strengthen dialogues between government and small-scale farmers and grassroots as a strategy to move agriculture and food and nutrition forward, especially in developing and low-income food deficit countries such as the Gambia. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Director General has requested me to inform you that owing to unexpected and unavoidable circumstances, he regrettably uh, had to cancel his intended visit to the Gambia specifically to attend and participate in this very historic moment. I should also state here that um, the Director General has declared